Debbie Smith commented and asked this. Head swap? Hey Debbie, gotta say your question was a little precise and I love brevity. By the way, I thought it would be a lot of fun to do head swap in Photoshop today, so let's do it. So the image that we are going to use is this one and this one and we are going to place this head over this one. Now. I have to say this, there are tons of ways of doing head swap in Photoshop. The way that I teach you today is not the only one, but the basic principle remains the same. Now what's the basic principle? Number one, the lighting situation should match. So if the light is coming from the front, it should come from the front in both of the images. It shouldn't come from the side in one image, shouldn't come from the, uh, from the top in another image. No, it, it should be similar. Okay. So as you can see in this image, the light is coming from the front. In this image also, the light is coming from the front. Had the light had been coming from say the top right and we had seen a long shadow under the, under the nose, it wouldn't have been able to match the face here because that would kind of look fakey. And number three, Actually, I was number one or number two? Okay, number two. Number two thing is that you gotta match the skin tones. And to be able to match the skin tones, you can only swap heads with similar skin tones. Okay, I'm not saying you cannot have different skin tones. Of course, two, uh, two skin tones never match. But here's the thing, you gotta have similar skin tones. At least not somebody with a dark skin body on a light skin head or light dark skin head on a light skin body. That just cannot happen, right? So you have to match skin tones. It has a limit to a certain extent. It can, you can always match skin tones, but it has a certain limit to it. So get used to it. So number three things you gotta find a happy place with is that you have to admit that you won't be able to match the hair. Just keep in mind that. Now, what do I mean by that? You cannot have this hairstyle in this photo. You gotta have her hair and just her face. Okay, so keep that in mind. So in some cases you can, but in most cases you cannot. So always be prepared to have the hairstyle of the one you are placing your subject on. That being said, the whole process of head swapping is just what? Just cutting the head from here and pasting it here. I know that sounds bad, but you know what I mean. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to cut the head. That sounds bad, but you know, uh, actually, okay, you get the idea, right? So select the lasso tool and you don't have to be super precise here. You can be kind of, you know, so let's select the hair head and select more than you have to always select more than you have to, right? We can always mask it here. Now, some of you guys are wondering why not copy the whole image and mask the head here? No. Why? Because the transformation is going to be difficult. Let me show you what I mean. So if you had copied the whole image and pasted it over here and say you mask the head like that, like so, what would have happened it, it is that when you transform it, control T, the transformation tool appear quite far from the head and it becomes totally difficult for you to do that. So that's why I ask you to select a bit of the hair, head and leave some space, okay? Select more than you have to, but select around the head, okay? So something like that. All right. Control C, Control a command C, come to this one, Control a command V. Now you got that. Now convert this into a smart object, right? Click on it and convert to smart object because in the process of swapping the hair, you might have to make the size smaller or bigger, smaller or bigger a couple of times. And in that, if that's a raster image, that's going to lose details. Okay. So that's why I convert it into a smart object. If this was a raster image, what would happen is that once you made it smaller, say this small, and then you made it bigger. Okay. It would have pixelated had it been a raster image. So it's important for you to tr first convert it into a smart object. Now, before placing it over her head, let's do one more thing. One more last thing. We have to match. Okay. So let's uh, keep this head to the side of her face. And let's just match for now. Just that. Just match the skin tone. Okay. So matching skin tones have already have a tutorial on that. If you have not watched it, make sure you watch it. It's titled Match Skin Tones in Photoshop. Just search it. Picks imperfect. You'll get it. So to match skin tones, simple. Go uh, come back to this one, the background layer, and uh, make a sample. Take a sample of her forehead. This color of her forehead. So select the lasso tool and just select around her forehead. Okay. Control command J. This keeps this in a, into a separate layer. Now we need to average this. So 
press and hold controller command and click on this. This makes the selection around it. Now what you do, filter blur average. So this average is this color. So we have this color sample right here. Okay. Now if you're wondering what I'm doing, this, 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 this is nothing. But press and hold alter option and click on this. This makes this layer solo. And again, press and hold alt and click on it and it makes every layer visible. So that's that. Now let's come to this one and do the same for this one. Select the lasso tool and uh, take a sample from her forehead. You can also take a sample from her cheek, doesn't really matter. Just make sure wherever you're taking the sample from, whereas, whether it's forehead, whether it's cheek. So if you take sample from here, also take sample from here, or the same part of the body. Now, if you have say hairs falling down here, so you might have to take sample from here or maybe from the chin. So it totally depends on where you, uh, how your subject is. So controller command J and then do the same filter blur average and let's now turn everything else off. So we have to match this one to this one. So how to do that? Create a curves adjustment layer, simple. So create a curves adjustment layer, click on this one and go to curves. Okay, I don't know why it appeared so big, but that's okay. Now. Let's uh, place it here and just ignore the background noise. That's just uh, ugly. And now we need to sample from this one and paste into this one. So how to do that? Well, simple. Click on this icon, as you can see this one and press and hold shift and click on it. This makes a marker and this shows you the red, green and blue values of this color. So we need to have the same red, green and blue values in this color. So we need to sample this color to into the curves. So how to do that? Press and hold control and shift together, command and shift if you are using Mac and click on it. What happened? Nothing happened. But if you go to red, see there's a point there. There's a point there. Now what are these points? These are the red, green, uh, red, blue, green values of this color. So if, it, if I go to red and select the red value of this color and change this red value of this color to this color, so we can match it, right? So this red value is what? 216, we need to make it what? 253, always look at the left, 253, forget the right, 253, okay, 253, okay. Let's come to the green value. So green value of this one is 207 and this one is, so select that, and this one is 194. So we need to make it what, 207, hit enter. Oops, something, uh, ah, yeah, it's 207. Next come to blue. And the blue value of this one is 195. We need to change it to 187. Now these two colors are now matching, right? But uh, we cannot see them matching because of course, both uh, the curves layer is above both of them. So if you want to see them matching, what you have to do, watch. You have to, this one is this one, right? So we need this to be affected. So watch, they both are matching, right? Isn't this beautiful? Now let's throw away everything else and we just need the curves now. And the curves will just be affected in this one. So press and hold alter option and click on it. This creates a clipping mask. It won't be affected on the this one. If it was not a clipping mask, this would have just affected this one too. But we don't want that. So alter option, click on it. Also another way of making a clipping mask is clicking on this button and this creates a clipping mask. So before, after, Got it matched. Now you can modify the RGB, the main channel, make it bright, brighter or darker depending upon the skin. Now it's pretty much matching. Now it's time for us to paste it on the other layer. So we would go hold it and just come to this layer and just paste it right there. Now to match it up, so to align it up or to align her eyes, to align her chin, what do you have to do? Change the blend mode to difference. You can see now, where is it? So you can match it along. So, so let's match her skin and from there we'll match her eyes. So if chin is matched, both chins are aligned. So it's pretty much aligned. Now, time to match her eyes, control a command T and then place the anchor point on her chin because we have matched the chin, right? So the anchor point was in the middle. Okay. And from there, you once you place that, then you try rotating it till the eyes match, right? A little bit rotation and then make it bigger from the chin. So press and hold shift and alt and then make it bigger. Now the eyes are a little bit aligned. Great. Hit enter. Now let me really quickly check whether it's re recording or not. Yes, it is. Now let's change back the blend mode to normal. Now we got that. Now we need to erase stuff, create this mask button, take the brush, black the foreground color. How to make the black, uh, how to make black the foreground color? Press X right, to toggle between the background and the foreground color. If it's some other color, 
say some random color, press D, right? And then press X. It, D just means default, okay? Then just uh, make sure the flow is 100 or something around that. If you want to be really careful, you can go as low as 30, 29, something like that. And really take your time and remove the side areas. And just like that. But here's the problem. The problem is you cannot match your skin. Now, the thing is, let me show you something. We are just pasting this area, right? So we need to match either. We have two options. The option number one is select her chin very carefully and delete it. But we have some extra lights coming on here. So coming on from the sides, right? So we cannot select her chin. Instead, we have to use her chin. So we, we gotta use, uh, we gotta modify her chin to match hers. So it sounds difficult, uh, but you get the idea, right? We have to match her chin and shape it like her. So how to do that? Simple. So let's go ahead and just do the rubbing part first really easily. Go the black one carefully. Okay, so we are pretty much done now. We have to match the chin. So let's come back to this one and make a copy of the background layer and create a smart object, convert this into a smart object. So that's another way of converting into smart object, filter, convert to smart filters, or you can use the same way, right click on it, convert to smart object. Then go to, you guessed it right, liquify, filter, liquify. Now we need this image, the above image as a reference, right? So to see that as a reference, what we can do, use, change it to a show backdrop, there's an option layer one and let's see whether we can is that the yeah so we got that okay to see the that layer's name was layer one so we can increase the opacity the blend here and there you go now our job is to match her chin with that hers okay so we'll take her a little down with the forward warp tool we'll take slowly nudge it slowly nudge it okay slowly nudge it slowly here, just slowly nudge it, make it a little bigger. Just nudge it slowly. Match it. So it's pretty good. Great. That's pretty much matching. All right, that looks awesome. And since it's a smart object, we can always go ahead and uh, edit that. All right, now we have got pretty much it. Have a look. This looks pretty nice. Now what we can do is that this is not a little matching, so we need to do a little bit of select this mask and uh, a little bit of masking here. Any, if you spill extra area, what you can do, you can press X again, this changes to white and you can paint that, paint that area back. And that's pretty much it. So you're getting it, right? So it's matching. Now let's rotate it a bit. I guess it needs a little bit of rotation. It's pretty better. All right, good. Awesome. Now let's uh, paint in white, just a little bit of eyebrows and stuff. Let's, uh, we need to do it carefully. You take your time, you get the idea. I'm gonna give you the image, take your time and do it properly. Right, that's pretty good, awesome. Okay. Now we need to match the sides just a little bit. So we need to make the background a little whiter, a little. So it's just, uh, okay. So let's move it just a little bit to the side. All right, now that's matching. Now, matching is gonna be a little challenging on your part. Now, about matching. So it's kind of matching. Make take it a little to the. Might have to rotate time and again here and there just a little bit. Have a look. Yep, it's good. Better. Okay. Now 
you can always smoothen her chin and you know how to do that right okay now uh, brightening up so this is not matching here so we would go to this one the background copy and add a curves adjustment layer and just look here don't look anywhere else and just brighten this up until it matches right it's matching now great so now when you added the curves it comes with a mask press and hold control and I command and I and then take the brush white color as the foreground and then paint just over this area we'll increase the flow paint just over this area and this pretty much matches that okay you can if you want to and then decrease the opacity to the point where it matches and there you go you can always go ahead and increase the reds just a little bit to match with it okay and increase the decrease the greens to make it more magenta ish all right great so I don't think green decreasing the green was a good idea all right so you get the idea now let's just uh, just I thought let's add a hue saturation layer to this one and let's desaturate it a bit and clipping mask add a clipping mask alt or option click on it just desaturate it just a little bit there you go and it's pretty much done now as you can see the hands are a little darker than the face but it was there from before before also the face was bright and the hands were dark but we need to solve it people will think that he has done it wrong so let's get the hand right so to get the hand right so add a curves uh, hue saturation layer this time okay and we need to make the hands brighter so we need to select the color of the hands so click on this button and then pick this color and then just for the indication purposes take the hue all the way to the left to see which areas are being selected expand the range just a little bit to select the hand so now complete hand is selected now what you can do you can just brighten it lighten and then increase the saturation now hand is lightened but along with the hand the face is also lightened so we don't want that right control command i on the mask and then take the brush and just paint over the hand with white color you don't have to be super careful about it because we have just selected the hand and that's pretty much it now you can make it as bright as you want as it matches there you go awesome so let's quickly look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after so isn't that interesting so you can always go ahead and edit the eyes make it more brighter make it more darker but that's the basic principle behind head swap and i hope you enjoyed this and if you did make sure to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe i know you already are but you in case you aren't share it with your friends make them subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating but before i go i have to tell you that sometimes what happens is you kind of have to add some shadows and dodging and burning into the face depending upon the image so keep that in mind in in this example if i was going further if i was spending more time what i would do i would smoothen this up i would smoothen this up i would smooth um, make it smooth right so that you have to keep in mind and uh, that's pretty much it bye take care peace have a great day no i'm never gonna stop no never gonna stop never gonna stop no 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 never gonna stop what never gonna stop never gonna stop no 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 never gonna stop yeah Never gonna stop, never gonna stop, no, 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 never gonna stop Never gonna stop, never gonna stop, yeah Remember back in those old days, coming home from school and stop writing songs Friends invited me to go rage, but I was so caught up that my mind's gone